Hello, this is Gene Garino for Cool Trade University. The topic right now is shorting stock. A lot of you have, you know how to buy stock, you know how to hold the stock. You know that Cool Trade is designed to take the profit when the stock moves up. But some of you have heard about shorting stock and you're not quite sure what that means or how it works or when to do it. So we're going to do a little training on shorting stock right now. When we talk about shorting stock, Real simple, it's the sale of borrowed stock with the expectation the stock will go lower in cost. So it's the sale of borrowed stock. I'm gonna get into the details. Who do I borrow it from? How do I sell it? The expectation though is that the stock is going to go lower in price. In uh, price. So you're gonna profit by buying the stock back or covering that position at a lower price and returning the borrowed stock to your broker. You keep the difference as your profit. Now I'm going to go through a little case study, a little example so you understand exactly how this works. But when we talk about shorting stock, I said borrow the stock. Who do you borrow it from? The answer to that is simple, your broker. Now your broker may not own the stock themselves, but they have many, many clients other than you. And when you buy stock and hold it, you actually gave your broker permission to use that stock for shorting stock, lending it out, trading with it. You gave them permission to do that. You're not using it, you're just holding on to it. So that's exactly what your broker does. So when you want to short stock, there'll be a button on your screen with your online trading account. If you do it that way or with Cool Trade, it'll say short stock. What it's actually doing is borrowing the stock from the broker. That stock then is sold. Now you receive credit in your account. If it was sold for $1,000, you don't pay $1,000, you receive $1,000. Now that $1,000 in credit is fine, but you're going to use that money eventually to buy the stock back or cover at a lower price. So here's how the logistics of it work. When you return the borrowed stock to your broker, hopefully you bought it back at a lower price than what you sold it for initially, and you retain the profit. So the profit itself is the difference between what you paid for the stock and what you sold it for. It's just we're selling it before we're buying it. That's where it's a little bit odd. We make money on the way down by borrowing the stock, selling it, we receive a credit. When the stock drops in price, we use that money to buy the stock back, return it to the broker, we keep the profit. So when we look at shorting stock, and I want you to see this clearly, it's typically shorter term trading. When we talk about long trades going up, I've explained to you in the past that stocks go up and it may take three years for them to go up and six months for them to go down. So the short side, stocks moving down, move much faster. So we're typically doing shorter term trades when we're shorting stock. In addition to that, you do have the ability to have unlimited loss potential. Now let's think this through. When you buy stock and hold it, the most you can possibly lose is whatever you paid for the stock. So if I pay $30 a share, the most I can lose is all $30 per share. But when you short stock, you're actually borrowing the stock from the broker. Your only obligation is to replace it, put it back at some point. So if the stock goes up and it keeps going up and up and up, the sky is the limit. Theoretically, a stock can go up forever. So at some point, you're going to have to cover that position. You're going to have to buy the stock back. And if it's at five times what you sold the stock for, that's a massive loss. Now the unlimited is true, but the reality is it's going to be limited to whatever money you have in your account because your broker is never going to let you have the stock and not have to replace it if you don't have the money available to buy it back to cover that position. So rest assured, the broker is going to limit this. If the stock price goes up, eventually they're going to just simply close that out and cover that position by using all of the cash in your account. So I guess you could say there is a limit. When you're shorting stock, the limit is everything you have in your account. Now pointing that out, making sure it's very, very clear, that's a riskier trade than buying and holding. We can lose everything we paid for the stock, but when we short stock, we could lose everything that we have in our account. Now, there are we need to control this and that's what this is all about. So you need to decide your exit strategy and you know, I tell people this all the time. It's not when you get in, it's when you get out that's important. So you need to decide what that exit strategy is and I've already let you know with shorting stock, it's a shorter term trade. So we're probably not going to be in it for a long period of time. We're going to get in and we're going to get out. Now that may be days or weeks, but it's probably not going to be months or years because if a stock continues to go down, eventually it's going to get down to virtually nothing and you should close it out and just take your profit. And when you short stock, it's going to require you to have the funds 
on reserve to cover the short position. So when I say you get credit, it doesn't mean you can take the cash out and go spend it. You're going to get credit. It's going to be in your account, but that money is on reserve. It's going to sit there until you cover that short position. Now, when do you short a stock? There's a number of different reasons why and, and possibilities for shorting stock. One is where a stock breaks long-term support. For instance, I was uh, looking at a chart of Apple recently, and the support that it had recently was about $400 a share. So $400 a share is very, very good support. If Apple goes below $400 a share, the next support is down at $80 a share. That's a big, huge move down. Now, $400 a share, if it breaks below it, that may be a reason to short that stock. Fundamental changes, things like Telegraph, don't use them anymore. As a matter of fact, as of last month, July of 2013, the very last Telegraph was sent. It was some country in Africa. So Telegraphs are no longer. Pagers used to be the rage. Everybody carried them around. They virtually don't exist anymore. There's still a few. Cell phones are now. So when there's fundamental changes in what we're using and what we're doing. Real estate. A lot of people think real estate and the stock market have nothing to do with each other. Oh, it, when the real estate market goes down, you can make a lot of money using the Case-Shiller Index and using ETFs, exchange-traded funds, to make money on stocks as they're going down that are related to real estate. So you can make money in real estate on the way up and the way down in the stock market or in the dirt and bricks and so on. In world events, security concerns. You know, after 9-11, security concerns went through the roof. TSA was formed. Taser, that's a company here local in Arizona. Tasers, all of a sudden people said that's a great alternative. Scanners in the airports. So world events will drive stocks up and drive them down too. If an airline has a problem and a plane goes down, that airline stock could go down. If there's a cruise ship that has a problem, that cruise ship could go down. Not the ship itself, but the stock. Things like BlackBerry. Blackberries, when they first came out, that was the business tool. It was the phone, the tool that everyone had to have. But when Apple introduced the iPhone that could do more and it was even more fun and it was a sexier piece of machinery, Blackberries kind of went to the side. And if you still have a Blackberry today, you're almost looked down upon. So things have changed. And now that Android has come up, the iPhone is not the only game in town. That's one of the reasons why Apple stock went from 700 down to 400. In addition to that, stop loss. When we talk about stop loss, we've talked about this before, we understand what that means, but now I'm gonna show you how to make money with it. Not just limit your loss, but think about it. A stop loss, we bought the stock at 19, it goes up, it goes down. We should have sold it at 20, but we didn't. So now it starts to go down. We predetermined, if it ever gets to $18 a share, I'm gonna get out, that's the most I'm willing to lose. I will lose a dollar a share, but no more. So at that point, we've locked in a loss, but if 18 was support, or if there's some other fundamental change or some other reason why we think the stock is gonna to continue to go down, that might be your trigger to go ahead and short this stock. So what do we do? We could actually set it up with Cool Trade that here's the spot. If it gets to this level right here, we're gonna turn it around. Instead of being long, we're gonna go short. So we're gonna short the stock right there. Let's take a look and see what that looks at. We're gonna borrow the stock and then sell it at $18 a share. That $100, or I'm sorry, 100 shares at $18 a share is an $1,800 credit that we receive in our account. The stock drops to $15 a share. At that point, we need to make a decision. It's dropped very quickly. Remember I said shorter term. We want to make sure to cover that at a lower price so we can buy it back to cover the position and then we replace it, give the stock back to the broker. At that point, if we paid $15 to get the stock and we give it back to the broker, we received $18 per share, which means the $1,800 we receive is used to buy the stock back, and now we have a $300 difference, and that's your profit. So in shorting stock, we're selling high and buying low, borrowing the stock from the broker and making profit as it goes down. Now, when we look at this chart here, and we've seen this chart before with Apple, when you think about the opportunity to make a lot of money, quickly. Here's Apple dropping from 700 down to 400. What a gold mine opportunity for shorting stock. Now it actually did have some spots where you could actually tell where this might have some support. Here's one and I'm drawing a few lines showing support. Resistance becomes support on the way down. So here's one spot where that resistance turned into support. It dropped below that and came back up. If it dropped below that level right here, that had long-term support at that point. Where's our next level? All the way down here. 
from way back, we can see it, that was the level and that's exactly what it did. It dropped to around $400 for the next level of support. So once it dropped below, it looks like that spot in there, about 350 or so, all the way down for the next 150 points was pretty clear where it was going to go at that point. So shorting stock, we can make a lot of money with it. We make money on the way down. We sell it high, we buy it back low. It's easier than you might think. I wanted to give you this much of an introduction to shorting stocks so that you might now have the confidence to try it. Again, with Cool Trade, do it in simulation mode first. Start by just putting in a few positions, watch what happens. In simulation mode, let it close out a few trades and learn from that process. Then you'll gain the confidence to do it for real in your trading account. I want to thank you from Cool Trade University. This is Gene Guarino. Thank you very much for being here.